In this video, we are going to um, incorporate uh, the idea of momentum into the electric and magnetic fields. Um, this is part of section 8.2.2 in the textbook um, discussing the topic of the Maxwell stress tensor. Um, so uh, what we'll do is um, we'll start with the force. So the Lorentz force. So Q um, E plus V cross B. But um, now instead of writing it just as a discrete charge Q, we can write it as the um, uh, a charge uh, density. So I can rewrite this equation as the integral over the volume of E plus V cross B, the density times the volume. So really, if I think about it, what's inside the integrand is the amount of force per unit volume. So I'll write it as little f is rho E plus rho V cross B, or I can write that in terms of a current. And so I write rho E plus J cross B. Okay, so that's my force per unit, um, uh, force per unit volume. Um, <clears throat> now, if I use uh, Maxwell's equations, I can get rid of the charge density using Gauss's law, that's epsilon naught, the divergence of E. And I can write uh, using the Mac Ampere Maxwell equation, the current is the curl of B divided by mu naught minus epsilon naught, the time derivative of the electric field. Okay. So now we can get rid of charges and currents entirely and talk, in t and talk specifically only about fields. Um, so if you plug that in, you get a force per unit volume of epsilon naught del dot E times E plus, write in all the stuff for the current, Um, okay, so stuff um, crossed into the uh, magnetic field, um, and so, um, oh, so I could look at the second term. Uh, the second term I have um, that cross product with uh, the electric field and the magnetic field, and so if I think about it, if I start from a more general expression, of the time derivative of the electric field crossed into the magnetic field, then I would get from the chain rule the time derivative of the electric field crossed into B plus the electric field crossed into the time derivative of B. Okay, so basically this last term here, um, I could expand, I could, well, I could rewrite um, as um, so epsilon naught the time derivative E crossed into B is equal to epsilon naught um, the time derivative of both fields crossed into each other minus epsilon naught E crossed into the time derivative of the magnetic field. Okay, so that you may think that's not really helping me. I'm just <laughs> adding more terms. Um, but if you think about it, um, we do have an equation of the electric field with respect to the time derivative of the magnetic field. That's Faraday's law. So if we look at Faraday's law, 
Faraday's law says that the time derivative of b is equal to minus the curl of e. Okay, so then what do we get? Um, if I don't worry about the epsilon knots for a while, I would say the time derivative of e crossed into b, which is what we're trying to substitute away, is equal to the time derivative of e cross b quantity plus the um, e crossed into the curl of e, like so. Um, <clears throat> so the minus signs cancel. And so, okay, now um, if we start to plug things in um, back into what we had before, um, we would have, I'll rewrite things, the force per unit volume is epsilon naught. First, the stuff with electric fields. So the divergence of E times E minus E crossed into E, sorry, E crossed into the curl of E minus 1 over mu naught b crossed into the curl of b minus epsilon naught the time derivative of e cross b plus 1 over mu naught the divergence of B times the magnetic field B. Um, so you may ask, well, where did that last term come from? Because all the rest of them seem to come out of this equation up here. I have, you know, a, um, you know, I've got a curl of B, um, I've got a curl of B crossed into B, um, I've got the time derivative crossed into B. I've got this divergence of E. Where did I get the divergence of B times B? <clears throat> and what I did is I basically just added it in because I know that the divergence of B from Maxwell's second equation is zero. So if it's zero, I can just throw it in there. But by throwing it in there, what I get is a very symmetric equation now. Now I have basically terms, I have similar terms for electric fields and magnetic fields. Um, so, okay. So then I can do another substitution. The Laplacian of E is the gradient of E dot E. Um, and then from product rule four, this gradient I'm sorry, this Laplacian of E is E crossed into the curl of E plus E, um, oh, crossed into the curl of E again, because that's essentially the gradient of E dot E. So I get, I get repeated, um, plus, E dot uh, del E plus E dot del E again. Um, so basically I get those, I get these four terms, but since I have E dot E, then, you know, a lot of them repeat. So in the end, what I get is two times E cross the curl of E plus 2 times E dotted del times E. <clears throat> um, and so I can rearrange this now and get an equation for E crossed into the curl of E is 1 half the, the sorry, the gradient Oh, of e squared, 
So I made a mistake. This is not the Laplacian. This is the gradient of E squared. So, so the gradient of E squared is the gradient of E dot E. So in the end what I get is one half the gradient of E squared minus E dot del times E. Okay. <clears throat> um, so let's start cleaning that up. So now what I have is my force per unit volume is epsilon naught divergence of E times E plus E dot del times E right there. I get the same thing for the magnetic field. 1 over mu naught the divergence of B times B plus B dot the diver dot del times B <clears throat> and then the but then the last term I get is minus one half the gradient of epsilon naught E squared plus B squared over mu naught minus epsilon naught the time derivative of E cross B. So it's kind of uh, nice now we've combined everything up and we now have a term that has the energy density we have a term which has the pointing vector in it um, and so we can rewrite this as what's often called the Maxwell stress tensor. So it's a tensor, so it has two indices, and I can write this as epsilon naught EI EJ minus one half the Kronecker delta E squared plus one over mu naught BI BJ minus one half the Kronecker delta of b squared. <clears throat> um, okay, so if I write this quantity out now, this new Maxwell um, stress tensor, then I can um, essentially write uh, and the, um, if I use the arrow notation, so this right here, uh, Tij, is just the um, that one element so the element of I and the element of J so one element in this matrix um, of I rows and J columns um, but you could write this in the Gibbs notation and sometimes people write it with the double arrow on top so I can write out my tensor as T with that double arrow on top um, and um, so what I'll do in the next video is I will explain, I will explore this Maxwell stress tensor um, in a little more detail.